Welcome back everyone. For today's video, we're going to analyze one of the best games of this month with the geometry of chess. So I want you to visualize the board this way. We're going to have these four central squares. See how much control we have over this, as well as this outer square, as long as the critical diagonal, right? These two very important diagonals uh, throughout the game. So let's start. This is going to be Hikaru Nakamura playing with white versus Fabiana Caruana, who is playing black. So we get d4, d5, c4, e6, knight f3, knight f6. This is Queen's Gambit decline so far. But now the game changes slightly when Hikaru plays g3. g3 with the idea of putting the bishop here on g2, having this control over the diagonal. Okay, so d takes on c4, bishop g2, a6. Okay, a6 with the idea of pushing this pawn, b5, okay? So now we castle with white, knight c6. This is a common idea also with the Catalan putting, uh, putting the knight here on knight c6. So knight b to d2, b5, b5. So now black is going to have an extra pawn. There is some interesting things we can do with white. For example, we can play b3. b3, let's say that black takes. Now we can take back this pawn and okay, we're down this pawn, but we have extra activity. We have a lot of initiative. Let's say that black plays. This is the best move in the position, rook b8. Now we can play bishop b2. Okay, so these two bishops are in control of these very important diagonals, right? So bishop b7, e4, and now we have very important control over this four squares, right? This, uh, yeah, these four squares with these two pawn, central pawns. So that didn't happen in the game. Instead, Fabiano played c3. Okay, so now we are forced to move the knight and trying to recover this. So, okay, now Fabiano covers this pawn, protects this pawn with b4. Now we have to challenge this pawn structure. We don't want these pawns to be here all the time. So Hikaru plays correctly a3, bishop b7, knight to e5, c2. c2 is a tricky move. c2 is very forcing because now it's like, wait, we can, this is just hanging, right? We, we just, we can just take the pawn. No, so that will be a mistake. The problem is the say that knight takes, knight can take this pawn in the center and now we don't have time to cover these two uh, weaknesses, right? So the queen is being attacked and the bishop is attacked. We will have to move the queen somewhere. Let's say queen c4. Now bishop takes, bishop will take on d2 after the king takes. Now black has this very forcing queen d5 check. We have to trade queens and yeah, this looks amazing. This is an amazing position for black. So we don't want that to happen. We cannot take this pawn. Uh, instead, we can force the trade here. We give a check here with uh, bishop to c6. Uh, bishop has to take back. And now we can take this pawn safely. So bishop e4, putting pressure on the queen. We have to move the queen. Uh, Hikaru goes queen b2. It's all good. Bishop b7, retreating the bishop. Okay, so a takes on b4. Uh, bishop takes that pawn. And this looks like a quiet, really quiet move. Bishop to d2. Uh, to me, that's completely fine because we're playing against the bishop pair. So whenever you have this disadvantage, and also um, we were done a pawn, we're not longer a pawn anymore, but and uh, let's say they have we have a next uh, we are down upon and playing against the bishop pair you immediately want to trade at least one bishop so bishop d2 and um, okay so we get c5 and now um this this is a good move knight to d3 we're again like putting um uh, we are trying to win this pawn right that is the whole point of knight to d3 however a slightly better move would have been to play rook c1. Rook c1, uh, we are aiming to win the pawn, 
and putting our rook on an open diagonal, right? So rooks belong to open files, in this case a semi-open file. But okay, this is still playable and it's fine. The idea behind it is to win this, this uh, bishop. So we get queen d5, right? Threatening to play checkmate. So we have to defend. Okay, we get f3. Bishop takes on d2. Finally trading bishops and finally activating this knight, which was really sad on this square. Queen takes on d4. So now uh, we have a decision to make here. We have to either trade the, trade the queen or, I don't know, move it somewhere. But if anything else will be kind of awkward. So uh, Hikaru decides to trade. She takes on d4. And now I think uh, at this point, white is slightly better because the a6 pawn can be targeted with the, this, uh, the, these two knights, right? So it can be targeted and now white should be slightly better. At least it's easier to play. And now this bishop is restricted by the pawns, right? The, yeah, this, this bishop doesn't have a lot of participation. And we're going to see later that this bishop is going to become not a strength, but rather a liability. Okay, so we get rook f to c1. Finally, this this move was begging. Uh, the position was begging this move to be played. Now we cancel rook a4. Okay, putting the putting pressure on this pawn. Rook f to d8. Rook c7. Rook c7. Putting uh, again like we are trying to win this pawn and all. This, uh, the rooks also belong to the 7 rank. So rook d7. And here uh, we also face a kind of a tough decision. Because Hikaru went with this. Hikaru went with trading. But there is even a better move. A better move in the position is actually just to play rook c4. Is because this is, the, this is the best move because you have control of the c5, right? So if they take, now you can take back with c7 and we have a possession of this this file and it's complete domination. But okay, uh, it's still playable. So it's not losing on anything. Now after the knight takes, we take this pawn. Okay, Hikaru took the pawn. Bishop to c6, knight to c4. And then this was commented by Hikaru. A5 is a strategical mistake, and I agree, because the best, one of the best moves, what if you put the bishop here, on B5? On B5, now how do you disrupt this communication of the pawn and the, bon or the, bon of the, and the bishop, right? It's going to be hard to win and break through, so you kind of form a fortress here, but otherwise pushing A5, you don't have an advanced pawn uh, as you have the b3 pawn here for white so okay uh, king f2 king f8 rook d6 okay yeah this bishop is running out of squares so yeah it looks beautiful on this diagonal the problem is it doesn't have a lot of squares to go to so we get bishop to b5 knight a3 and bishop takes on d3 which piece do you take? Do you take this knight or this bishop? So both of them, according to the computer, are playable. But in practical terms, which piece has more dominance or more potential to dominate the center, the central squares, according to our geometry? This knight. This bishop has been restricted the whole game. right? So we want to allow this bishop to live and, and instead take this, this knight. And Hikaru went with that, okay? Because now this bishop has only one square to go to in this diagonal. And one of the best moves in the position is not to go here, but instead to play bishop g6. Bishop g6, maybe you can push f6 later and even try to win this pawn, reroute this bishop. But okay, so that, that was one of the best moves in the position. Fabiano uh, play bishop a6 okay so it's fine now we get rook d6 we enter this end game king e7 where the bishop is definitely going to be worse than the knight 
So king f6, rook c5, bishop b7, e4. So uh, bishop b... Okay, give me a second here. I wanted to show you something. So knight to c4. Yeah, instead of playing e4, knight to c4, getting this knight active, you have to make the most of your position. The knight is going to be very active, more active than the bishop. So Hikaru didn't go for that. Something that he play e4. He play e4. To me, it looks fine because you're also restricting the bishop even more. You are taking away this square with the with the pawn on e4. E4. So yeah, it's, it's completely fine. Okay, a4. We get a4. Now b4. Rook to d8. Trying to infiltrate and get into this diagonal. So king e2. Hikaru actually mentioned that he should have played king e3. But king e2 is perfectly normal. You have control over these three squares and now the rook can never infiltrate. So Hikaru was a little bit afraid of this. So now the rook maybe can hit this knight. Uh, it's, it's, it's playable. But to me this is completely fine. Yeah, king e2 is a very good strategic decision. Now we get g5, rook c4, h5, okay. So bishop a6. I was like, wait, uh, maybe why, uh, black can play this. No, I was hallucinating for a second because uh, white can just play b5. So I wanted to show you just that. Uh, we get b5, g4. Okay, so it's a bit of pawn play, f4, e5. And here you also have a decision, we have a decision to make. Okay, do we take this pawn or do we keep pushing? Yeah. Remember, control over these four squares. You want to take this pawn. You want to take this pawn. If king takes, now we enter this line where we're better with white because we have forcing moves. We want to protect this pawn. Uh, and now rook d1, let's say that the rook tries to infiltrate on the side of the board. Rook c7, putting pressure on the bishop. Uh, bishop takes the pawn. We can keep a check. And let's say that, okay, king f5, rook c5. And now, yeah, this king is in the middle of the board, but it's not a good attacker. It's, it's actually very bad at, at just staying alive. So rook d5, let's say that they, they protect with this, with this rook. We even have tactics here. We can win this bishop. So yeah, this is not this is not a good line. Okay, that didn't happen in the game. Instead, Hikaru play a5. All right. So h4. This is still pretty hard to play, right? This is a few pieces on the board, but hard to play. Rook h8. Knight to b1. Rook h h2 check. Now king d1. Rook, rook h1, king c2. Now Fabiano is going to play rook e1, which is a huge mistake. And it's not super clear why, because it looks like a good move, right? He's attacking this pawn twice. Uh, so uh, here, these two pieces are attacking this pawn, and we're only defending with one. Yeah, but now we can even protect with knight c3. So knight c3 defends this pawn, and a constant idea in this position is to play rook a7, removing all the squares available for this bishop, right? At least in, on this diagonal. So the best move in the position, instead of rook e1, is to play rook g1, targeting this pawn. You have to target this pawn with the idea of later aiming for this pawn, right? You can maybe infiltrate with your king and try to win this other e4 board very important that didn't happen in the game so rookie one knight c3 okay you cannot take this pawn with white with black uh, we get rookie three now see you have to waste a move to go after the g3 pawn so we have tactics we have tactics here knight to d5 checks we are forking the king and the rook bishop has to take bishop has to take and now how do you stop this? How do you stop these two pawns? It's too much advantage in the position, too many weaknesses. So a few moves later, black resign. There's nothing much to be done. And yeah, 
yeah this is so i hope you like this video where we have control over the center the diagonals became very important but ultimately not uh, the bishop is not going to be the best piece all the time sometimes it's going to be the knight when we have so much restriction on that piece so comment like and subscribe i will see you the next one take care